So it's all one. Um, you know, we we are integrated beings, uh, body, mind, and spirit. You cannot um, compartmentalize that. And that's one of the biggest problems in modern medicine, the medicine that we have today that's widely used. Um, everything is compartmentalized. So what you might feel on an emotional level is separate to your physical symptoms. But in homeopathy, it's all one, it's all integrated. And there's varying reasons why certain pathology, um, I and mean, from time immemorial for 200 years now, while all our homeopaths have been practicing and gathering evidence over clinical uh, trials and just having patients, we've seen the extremely strong link between our emotions, what happens there, and then the pathology that is created through that. I live better than a king ever did. I live better than a king. Oh, I don't need a king. I've got a puppy and I've got a car. And I've got friends and love in my heart. And I've got the constitution. Welcome, Freedom Junkies, to more Freedom Junkie Radio, the podcast that brings more freedom into our lives, whatever that is, whatever that looks like. It's a giant umbrella. And today I am going to, we, my guest and I, not me, my guest is going to be demystifying homeopathy for us because according to her, she's not American, that according to her, we Americans don't understand homeopathy. We don't know what it is. And I've been working with her for about, I want to say almost six months now, and it's been nothing short of miraculous. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to Freedom Junkie Radio's sponsor, Chris's Coins in South Austin on Slaughter Lane, Chris with a K, K R I S coins.com. If you are looking to get some gold or silver, some coins, go see Chris, go to his website. I, that's where I got mine. And if you need a hedge for your and for the inflation that we're experiencing, or if you just want to give someone the best Christmas gift ever, go see Chris, tell him Betsy from Freedom Junkie Radio sent you and thank him for sponsoring the show. With no further ado, I would like to, to welcome Amrita Desaram to the show. Amrita, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. It's an honor. It is such a joy to have you on here. So Amrita and I have been acquainted and friends now for, I don't know how long it's been, over over two years. Yeah, over two years. Yeah, two years. <laughs> and so it wasn't even at the beginning of our relationship when I found out that you're a, a homeopath. And we started talking about it one day and you, you are a true homeopath. That's what you do. And you don't, you don't wear that sign on, you don't go around going, I'm a homeopath, but that's what you do. And so you are from Sri Lanka, but you got your education in the UK. I want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So you told me that Americans don't know what homeopathy is. And I agree because what I think homeopathy is, let me, so here I am going to represent the ignorant American who doesn't know. And, and I do know what Americans know, which is Arnica. And actually I've taught a lot of people about Arnica. It's a miraculous little homeo homeopathic remedy. I should have had it sitting here. I have some in my purse. I've carried it with me since my kids were toddlers, because if you do something that bruises you, like uh, how I learned about it was a, one of my old students, a five-year-old had um, slammed his hand in the car door his mom got Arnica in him instantly, got the topical gel or cream on his hand. And the next day, even he didn't know it had happened. Mm -hmm. That's how miraculous Arnica is. But that is like allopathic Western medicine. That's a one-stop shop, one size fits all remedy. And that's not how homeopathy works. So and still more of an intro for, for the audience. I was absolutely shocked when you said, Betsy, oh, well, I was telling you that I was having hormonal issues. Yes. I'm probably entering early menopause, something like that. And 
I knew my hormones were off because, and I know women can relate to this, men probably can't relate to this, but the breast tenderness was really, really bad. I was having constant, almost excruciating, not excruciating, but very painful breasts constantly all the time. And I knew that something was off with my hormones. And I told you, and you said, let's do some sessions because I want you to see. So we have, we've done four or five. Mm -hmm. My breast tenderness is completely gone, 100%. And according to you, it is permanent. Like I, I won't have to revisit it. I mean, maybe if something else were to come up in my life, but what I didn't know at all that was completely unexpected was the depth of your intake it was like an acupuncturist. You spent two hours with me and you were basically like, start at the beginning. Tell me the traumas you had in your life. Tell me what your family life was like growing up. What makes you, you? And because you're putting a puzzle together, what you would treat one person for, for hormones, you would treat completely differently another person because mm -hmm what's causing it. I was telling my husband that this morning, if one person has psoriasis and another person has psoriasis, you're not necessarily going to give that. You won't give them the same treatment because the cause of it is different. And that's, that's what exactly I, right. I, and I, the thing I love about non-Western medicine is the holistic idea of let's treat the cause, not the symptom. And that's exactly what you've done. And it's, it makes me so happy. So I'm Rita, now that I've just been <laughs> lathering, <laughs> what, where, where do you go from there? Okay. So I think um, let's just peel back a little bit to, and introduce our audience to um, what homeopathy is and then the fundamentals, and then we can go a little bit deeper maybe. Um, so homeopathy is not, let's just say it's not, a lot of people confuse it because it's a natural medicine or is it herbs or is it, um, acupuncture? Is it vitamins? Is it minerals? No, it's its own unique form of medicine. It's the second largest medical system in the world and over hundred million people use it around the world as their sole means of health. So it's widely practiced. Um, it's just that in some areas, in some places, and I found in my personal experience when I arrived um, in America, I found that a lot of people didn't quite understand it, um, didn't know what it was and didn't know what depth to which um, it can heal. Um, and, you know, at first it was like, well, you know, it's in the, it's next to the breath mints in health food stores. Um, you know, we've got these huge remedies, which we call polycrest, which have far reaching um, healing properties. Uh, like, for example, something called Nat Mio. Um, and it's there, you know, and it says for headaches. And it's just, okay, it's for headaches. Yes, it does cure headaches, but it does so much more than that it's just a massive remedy so the depth to which homeopathy um can affect healing which is truly phenomenal is not understood um so that's one thing i'd like to clear up today with you and so when we had that conversation like you um you said earlier it was okay you know this is a really great opportunity to show someone that i care about um how it works um, and I think we took you through that journey. Um, homeopathy is extremely individualized. That's another very distinguishing factor. So when we did sit down, you know, it was an hour and a half to two hour intake where I would ask you, you know, a series of questions just to find out who is Betsy? You know, what makes her tick? What, what does she like? What does she dislike? We go back into your um, history, your childhood, traumas, illnesses, just to see where something could have been misaligned and your energy, there is a dis-ease in your energy that has brought your current pathology to light. So your body is always working for you, never against you. Um, it has innate wisdom to heal itself. We just don't trust it. But fundamentally what our body does is it pushes things to the periphery um, and tries to 
by all means, it's in survival. So it doesn't want any of our important organs to be affected. So that's where you see, you ask any homeopath, for example, oh, you know, it's just, it's a classic asthma, eczema. We see so many patients um, uh, with asthma. And when we do treat them for their asthma and their asthma gets better than their eczema flares up. And that was the original thing that was on their skin that was suppressed with steroid treatment. Um, and then it goes into the lungs. So when we see our patients and we we free their lungs of the asthma, it, show, it throws it to the um, the periphery, which is their skin. And then we heal that. And then it, the cure is formed. Um, and then another very distinguishing factor about homeopathy that I'd like to talk about is the way we make our remedies. It's extremely unique. Um, there's dilution and succussion. So we take a crude dose. I'm not going to get into it um, too in depth, but um, we have we make it out of plants, animals, imponderables, um, anything naturally occurring. And we make um, the remedies by diluting it and succussing it. Succussing it is just pounding it. So what the dilution does is it takes away the toxicity and the side effects and the succussion of the remedy, it retains and amplifies the signature of the original substance. And so what you're getting in a sense is the energetic imprint of the original substance that's devoid of any side effects. And that's how it works okay. <laughs> you I know, wanna... in a nutshell. Okay, so you know something else that Americans think about homeopathy is that you know it got thrown under the bus with all the other ones, the the naturopaths, the chiropractors, when Rockefeller took over medicine in the United States, and all of that became quackery. And so there's a, a huge part in, in Western thought that, or at least in America, maybe not so much in in Europe and England, um, that you have to get beyond. It's almost like you have to believe in it. You know, and and so with the homeopathy, one thing I'm aware of is the fact that it's like I think of this is so interesting. The the one for sleep, when you go to the one size fits all next to the nice smelling natural soaps in the in the you know natural market, and you see the yeah. homeopathy there, the one for helping you sleep is coffea crudia. It's from the coffee. And so it's, right. it's fascinating because it's the opposite of what you think. Coffee should keep you up. But so what we've been taught or what I believe is that they took the coffee, they ground it up, they made the dilution, like you said, then they took a tiny bit of that, diluted it again, took a tiny bit of that, diluted it again to where there's none of it there. Like you said, there would be no side effects. You wouldn't actually get kept up by it. It is what I've heard is a vibrational medicine, which on a physical sense, makes no sense to people. They think, oh yeah, that's complete um, witchcraft. It makes no sense. But on a healing level, on the vibrational frequency level that heals us, it completely makes sense. So yes. that, I know well, that. Yeah. So so the, the other principle of homeopathy is like cures like. So the coffee, which would normally keep you up, um, given in potency, in dilution, in the homeopathic remedy, um, works with the body. The body recognizes that, and it does the actual opposite thing of what um, uh, the the substance. So, it like cures like. Um, so, what would cause something in a sick person when we give it? Um, so, say for example, let's use an example like um, asthma. Or say, let's say we're, we're cutting an onion. And when you cut an onion, uh, your eyes are watering and they're stinging. Now, some people might experience that when they have hay fever or when they have a cold, for example. So the onion is a remedy in homeopathy. We dilute it and it's called allium sepa. And we give, if someone's experiencing the, a cold or hay fever with those symptoms where their eyes are watering and it's stinging and it's exactly like what would happen with a healthy person cutting an onion and getting that dose in their eyes, it cures the sick person. So like cures like, but because it's given in an energy imprint, there's no original substance there. And we all know there's memory in water. 
we all know that uh, the water carries the memory of whatever, you know, it's been proven over and over again. Um, we all know that we're energetic beings. We all know that we vibrate on a frequency and that's, and every cell in our body is vibrating. And so when we're given a, given a, a vibrational energetic medicine, it's, it surpasses everything and goes straight into the way we are built. Um, and it's not a crude dose. Okay, so I think it's fascinating because you're also having me go back and think about when things started and what trauma was in my life at that point. So, and and kind of purging that trauma, forgiving myself, forgiving the others. And so then I have to wonder, how much of it is that? Because that's incredibly powerful work. But but like you said, I can give you the remedy. It's going to help you. But if you don't, that that's part of the core uh, cause of an illness. It has to be addressed as well. How much of it is the cure and how much of it is the trauma work? So it's all one. Um, you know, we we are integrated beings. Uh, body, mind, and spirit, you cannot um, compartmentalize that. And that's one of the biggest problems in modern medicine, the medicine that we have today that's widely used. Um, everything is compartmentalized. So what you might feel on an emotional level is separate to your physical symptoms. But in homeopathy, it's all one, it's all integrated. And there's varying reasons why certain pathology um, and in, from time immemorial for 200 years now, while all our homeopaths have been practicing and gathering evidence over clinical uh, trials and just having patience, we've seen the extremely strong link between our emotions, what happens there, and then the pathology that is created through that. So, for example, let, let's not use you as an example. Let's I, <laughs> let's talk about that was um, recently um, a lady we were treating, I was treating, and, um, you know, I see this a lot in my clinic. Um, she had been on repeated, repeated, repeated rounds of antibiotics for recurrent UTIs. So I would say 20 to 30 rounds of antibiotics for a long time, recurrently having UTI problems. Destroy um, your gut. Um, so she's gone to see, you know, her doctor and all they've prescribed is steroids and antibiotics repeatedly, 20, 30 rounds. Now, what that is doing is helping her in the moment, but it's not clearing what is actually causing the UTI. And so like in 95% of cases in our experience as homeopaths, we know that there is a history of either sexual abuse as a child violation as a grown adult sexually um anything that's the body considered a violation on that genital urinary sphere is then going to produce that kind of pathology as a protective mechanism to protect you from future hurt so the body is protecting you by giving you these symptoms saying okay you know what you're not going to get to that stage anymore where you can have a sexual encounter and be hurt so i'm going to give you these UTIs so that you stay away from that. So that's the body's protective mechanism to avoid that hurt again. So if someone like that comes to us, what we do is we treat the root cause, which is the trauma, what happened to them. And once you release that trauma from your body, there's no need for the pathology anymore because it doesn't exist. You know, we call it the central disturbance. Your vital force is diseased. The energy flow in your body is diseased. And we just need to peel back the layers, see where it went wrong. And then your body doesn't have to produce pathology like that anymore because we've cured it. We've addressed the issue. Whereas in, in conventionally, she would, the same lady would go to a doctor and get the steroids and the antibiotics. And then she may go see a psychologist and get therapy and be given antidepressants. But, you know, the antidepressants, the, the, the uh, steroids, the um, antibodies, they can't touch the depth of the distortion like homeopathy can. 
um, it just doesn't happen. And so we just, you know, the, the poor people, they, without properly understanding, because there's no kind of integration and everything is compartmentalized. That's another big issue in health today. Did that lady recognize what you were saying and say, yes. you, you, definitely that was part of my past? 100%, yeah. Wow. Okay. So homeopathy is much more popular in England than it is here. That's where you studied. I'm curious about your education, you know, and, and so I want to ask about your education in England and, you know, obviously, you know, anatomy, but it's, I wanted to ask something like, is it, how similar is it to a medical education in the United States? But that's a silly question because in the United States, they compartmentalize you and specialize you and you, you learn about the anatomy and you learn, you know, probably some basic stuff like how to cut somebody open, but it's not the whole being as, so I'm, I'm curious about your education and why we don't have more homeopaths in the United States. And if someone's interested after this interview, obviously I'll have your information in the show notes, they can contact you, but are there homeopaths that people can find like you here? Absolutely, absolutely. They are they are here in, in numbers um, in the United States. It's just that, um, I think that if you if you wanted to find someone, you could. Um, it's, you know, you just type into Google homeopath in my area, and there'll be numbers that come up. Um, it is widely practiced. There are homeopathic um, colleges in the United States. Uh, there are lots of very very renowned homeopaths who live here and work here. Um, there are pharmacies. Um, however, my um, I have been in the States for two years. And so, yeah, I am slowly getting to know everything that is, is happening here. Um, my education it was in England. And in England, it's a widely practiced, um, much more readily. And people understand it a lot more because, you know, the royal family, they use homeopathy, you know. Um, so it's accepted and practiced even on the NHS. That is, uh, which the NHS is the National System of Health you are you have um, homeopathy available to you okay um and around europe like france um 90 of physicians use homeopathy and france is considered the healthiest country in the world you know the, those correlations can't be ignored um so i studied at the center for homeopathic education in london it's the biggest college there in the uk um, I had the most wonderful experience. We had a BSc honors degree in homeopathy. Um, it was a four-year course, full on. Um, we did anatomy, physiology, because um, it's a bachelor of science. So we've been through, we had done the whole body with anatomy, physiology, and then homeopathy, mostly classically trained, um, you know, with a million books and uh, over 5,000 remedies we have now. Um, you know, it's just the same as any other uh, kind of uh, degree. However, what we're learning was completely different. We had clinical experience as students. Uh, we used to have a mini clinic every Wednesdays where we saw patients and we were in care of patients um, under the guidance of our, uh, um, all our teachers and um, yeah, I've, I've had the privilege of studying under some world-renowned homeopaths who I just, you know, think are just fabulous. And we have their books and we're still in touch. I am a part of the CHE uh, Pro, which is um, a community of homeopaths who are all integrated around the world, still in my college. And, you know, we have courses and we have masterclasses and we keep up to date with uh, with our art because it's a, you know, it's constant learning. It right. never so, ends. So how much do you change people's diet when you see someone? So it depends. It's everyone is individual. Um, I am not a nutritionist, but I do have a handle on basic nutrition and how we, you know, I'm a cook. I um, come from a food family, so I have a great understanding about food and what's healthy. Um, I used to have a restaurant in Sri Lanka and that's part of my, you know, <laughs> that's, that's part of me too. So for me, it comes very naturally. Um, and if we feel that something might be a little bit out of our depth, we do refer to our colleagues who are naturopaths and nutritionists. 
and ac acupuncturists. Um, because in a holistic sense, food is medicine. And if people are, if you have a client come in, who's, you know, eating McDonald's every day or whatever, you've got to address that. Absolutely. Right. And then yeah. on the vibrational level, how does it work? I mean, how, okay, here, I'm so excited. I'm one of those Texans that, and I'm sure this happens all over the world, but I'm one of those people that come January, I'm a miserable shell of myself blowing my nose 200 times <laughs> a day. Yes. It's horrible. Yeah. Cedar affects me horribly. And you said, all right, let's move on to the next thing. So when you go start seeing a homeopath, they start peeling away like the most obvious symptoms that you have and you dig that out, you get rid of it. And then they're like, let's move on to the next thing. What is it? And I have these eye floaters that we're hopefully working on, but I told you in my intake, probably you asked if I had any allergies and I said, yes, I have cedar in January. It's horrible to the point where we try to leave town if we can, if our kids schedules allow for it. Otherwise I just suffer my head off or I take an, uh, Claritin that actually works, but I don't want to take pharmaceutical medicine and I would love to be healed and find out where the pathology is in me and, and, and all. So we're going to do that. And I'm really excited. How is the vibrational medicine going to heal me? Okay. So the, the, the disease we were talking about earlier in your body. So the disease of energy flow. Uh, various reasons. Top three are trauma, uh, toxic overload, and then genetic susceptibility. So your hay fever could be because of toxic overload. Uh, it could be um, something happened around that time that's triggered that for you every year. Or it could be a genetic susceptibility that's been passed down. So there are varying levels of which homeopathy can be applied. So you mentioned, for example, Anika earlier, that's on a therapeutic level. And we do have broad based therapeutics that we use for people. Um, so for hay fever, there are a top 10 for sure that are mostly used for people with hay fever symptoms of varying degrees and varying symptoms. Um, and then what we do is we can treat you therapeutically, plus we can treat you individually and more integratively. There are a lot of levels like like there, you know, you're not one single black or white. There's a lot of gray area and there's depending on the patient, um, varying degree of why they might present with certain symptoms. So with you, OK, we are going to do some prep work because we know come January, you're going to be suffering. So our prep work before you have, I can't treat the symptoms now because you don't have them. I can't get the exact perfect remedy for you right now because you're not experiencing it. And I can't get that information. I'm like a detective. I need the information. Um, so what we do is we prepare your body and we have therapeutics for that too. We are going to be giving you certain remedies that will prepare your body for the season that's coming up to make you less susceptible. In your case, it's going to be a remedy called mixed pollen, which has pollens and grasses from around the world all mixed in to get and prep your body for the upcoming season to maybe knock off 80 to 90 percent of your symptoms. And then with what remains we will be treating um, homeopathically at that time acutely for that. Um, in your case, I also have, um, you know, homeopathy goes deeper than that. We have miasmatic treatment um, and you'll be getting tuberculinum, which is also a miasmatic um, remedy, which has a lot of those kind of symptoms in it. And it matches who you are without going too in depth with things like that. So, our remedies have a personality profile um, and our patient, uh, when we're, we're, we're looking and we're investigating who they are, what makes them tick, generally it falls into a personality profile of the remedies that we are, we're giving to them. So each remedy has a physical, mental, emotional, general profile to them, apart from the pathology that it may produce um, and which we in turn give the patient to cure. Um, and what's cool is it's like with a basic understanding of homeopathy, which, you know, I don't see why people can't have, um, 
yes, it's very intricate. Homeopathy is a very intricate art form. But at the same time, sometimes if you have a basic grounding understanding of certain remedies, you know, husbands and wives could have better relationships that, oh, this is where this is coming from. You know, we have remedies like a typical postpartum woman, um, a picture of a sepia woman. Sepia is the remedy. Um, she's tired, down and out, irritable. She's had enough. Um, you know, she's got this sensation of just uh, she doesn't want her husband near her. She doesn't want her kids. And she's she might leave. Um, you know, they, they might get divorced. But if the husband can recognize that, if people have a basic understanding of this is what she's going through, this is why she's feeling like this. There is so much that can be done. You know, it's just truly fascinating on so many levels. And then you have, you know, archetypal remedies um and i recognize in this in people all the time there's no reason why that can't be more general knowledge you know when people be able to understand each other a lot better it's amazing the reason we brought this up is because we were talking about me and my allergy susceptance and and you said you described me you said you're this like free floating musician <laughs> what did you say you yeah know- um so there's a remedy we were talking about um which is a miasmatic remedy a miasm is this big overarching uh, genetic susceptibility um, and it has certain aspects to it that only is present in that sphere and then it has remedies underneath that are susceptible to that um so yeah she she falls into this beautiful category of this tuberculinum person who um you know is free and wild and wants to travel and is a musician and you know she also happens to have um you know uh, susceptibility to hay fever and so it all falls into this beautiful thing and then underneath that um are other remedies that can support that but that miasm um without getting into too much detail we have three or four miasms that we use um under like a canopy um, and it in itself has a personality profile. And uh, we were just discussing how that but, suits that. Yeah, so you, you, it was like you were an <laughs> astrologer or something. Like, this is who you are. And I'm like, you just described me so beautifully. And that I would be susceptible to certain I- issues and diseases because of just who I am. It, it's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. Um, so there are varying re- levels. We have homeoprophylaxis, for example. You know, we treat people... Um, <clears throat> flu season we have remedies for people for the flu coming up to avoid taking certain vaccinations if they wanted to or um, when they're traveling and they need to take vaccinations we have homeoprophylaxis for those things um, you know we we have remedies made from natural substances we have remedies made from disease um, disease tissues that we give back homeopathically um, you know, we give back people, it's called tautopathy, where you give it exactly what, if you've received a vaccination and you've had side effects from that, we can give that vaccination back in potency that will clear those side effects. So there are many, many, many levels to which homeopathy works. And it's truly, truly wondrous. And so we will see come January how you feel. I know we will definitely revisit. I will let the Freedom Junkie radio community know how it goes. And so I guess if if we've piqued someone's interest as far as, huh, this is really interesting. This is cool. I really haven't ever considered this. I don't think most Americans have considered going to a homeopath. If you're having something chronic, if you're having something acute, if you're having something that you feel like you just need to clear, you can go to a homeopath, start Mm -hmm. the initial intake is always more expensive than the the follow-up sessions that you have. And now with telehealth, you can you can pick your homeopath and do it from anywhere. We did our intake in person. You liked that. I know, and I get it. As a music teacher, I do not want to teach someone a music lesson online. I need to, <laughs> I need to be there with them. Yes. I know it happens all the time. But so I just want people to consider the idea of huh, I've had this chronic thing for so long. Western medicine isn't helping. And you know, I I have an acupuncturist. So I have a couple of them that when things get weird, that's where I go. Yeah. I don't go to a doctor. 
Um, but now I have you. And so I would have to decide if something came up for me, is this what resonates? You know, do some muscle testing. What it, do I need to go see my acupuncturist or do I need to call Amrita? But I think maybe the way it works with your homeopath is you check in a couple times a year, regardless. Am I wrong? No, no. So, I mean, look, there are, um, there are so many people coming up that are going to need um, care. And our, our current system of medicine is, is failing. Um, and I think a lot of people can see that now. And, you know, the whole idea of that I have and a lot of my colleagues and homeopaths around the world, we want to empower people to, to help themselves. It's not just about picking up the phone, calling your home. You don't have to depend on us for everything. There is so much you can do at home uh, just with some basic understanding of the body, how it works. You know, there is a place for modern medicine. Absolutely. You know, but that should be the last port of call and more natural healing modality should be the first. Um, and if your first line defense is at home for acute things like cuts, bruises, stings, grazes, colds, flus, fevers, how empowered and how free are you to take your health into your own hands? So the overriding message that I really want to do, and I will be implementing these things in the future. I have, um, a website, yes, um, and I also have an Instagram page that I've just started that will mature over time um, with lots of information for people, be a resource for people. There'll be um, courses coming up for mothers with children, acute care. You know, we can't just say, oh, don't do this. Nobody's saying don't, don't go to the doctor, but what we're saying is just take just take a step back and really trust your body. And there are so many things you can do yourself to heal yourself, you know? And if it's out of your realm, sure. Yes. Go see a homeopath, see your acupuncture, see your natural path, but there is so much all you can also do to help yourself at home. You know, we're not that there is such a fear culture around our bodies and we really need to demystify that and give people the power back um, and the freedom back to treat themselves and trust their bodies. Cause your body knows how to heal. We just need to give it a chance. Um, so when you do go to see a, a homeopath, yes, we the in initial intake can be a little expensive, but overall our medicines cost eight, nine bucks. You know, um, if you go and see a, a, a doctor, even if you do have insurance, uh, almost always there is a component that you need to pay. And then you visit the pharmacy, which to get a cold medicine or an eye drop, which is 50, 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. And so over time, um, the fact that you're actually only really most of the time um, medicating that symptom and not really re going to the root cause, plus you're spending 50, 60 bucks every time you take something, um, seeing a homeopath and curing yourself. Um, and then not even having to be on any medication is far cheaper um, over a very short period of time. So I'm assuming you don't take insurance. Um, no, not currently. Right. So uh, that's that's that out of pocket expense, but it's going directly to your practitioner. If it's ninety bucks to go see your practitioner, if it's I don't know, I can't remember what, exactly what you charged for the initial, and then after that, but. It's going directly to you. And then, like you said, the remedies are so inexpensive. And even if you have me on three different remedies, that's still 30 bucks. You know, and it, it's not forever, right? Best no. it's for a short period of time and then you're clear of it and you don't, you're not dependent on medication your whole life. The, the beauty of homeopathy is it takes you back to a place where you can decide again who you want to be devoid of this crutch of illness that you carry around with you. Um, you know, Amazing. You it's a choice to be yourself again. And really, you know, people are talking so much now and there's so much awareness about um, the energy and manifestation and creating the life that you want to create. Um, health is your wealth. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Um, and in exactly the same way, just simple energetics and how your body works, it will give you that absolute amazing life that you crave. I, 
I have, my thoughts are so giant right now. It's like, I have this giant thought cloud over my head and it's beautiful. Um, you're speaking my language and the idea of getting back to plum, getting back to level, getting your center back and get it being healthy is, I mean, I'm feeling better than I've ever felt in my life. And, and I'm talking on an energetic level. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. I mean, and there's all this crap in the world that I know of. I know about it. Mm -hmm. I deal with it. Mm -hmm. I let it pass. I don't let it sit and cause any illness in me. And I was listening to Mike Adams and Dr. Edward Group talk the other day, a beautiful little snippet from one of their conversations. And now talking about major pathology in people when you're really sick, he's saying that it's either poisoning or parasites. And those are basic things, you know, like you were saying, toxic load, toxicity. We have to clear that, live a healthy lifestyle, but are you healthy as far as your mental, spiritual, physical body? And that's the kind of thing where you can talk to your homeopath about it. It's like, yeah, you can clear your parasites. Yeah. You can do a detox and try to get yourself clear, but are you happy? Yeah. Have you reached? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, say even with your example about parasites, they parasites only proliferate and grow in ground that they can. If the host is not, not allowing it, if, if the environment in which they're growing is not susceptible to, for them to grow, they can't grow. And so it actually goes back a layer beyond that too. Um, so why are the parasites being allowed to grow in your gut? Why is the environment in your body allowing this to happen? Because usually if you're healthy, completely healthy, um, everything is in alignment, they wouldn't be able to survive. So it's a step back from that too. What, what is creating that environment? And most often, not always, most often it is <laughs> the mental, emotional sphere that's out of alignment that has caused that disease and the energy flow not to be right in that area. Um, you know, um, although I'm a homeopath, we also, um, we, we, you know, we, we integrate other forms of natural medicine into our practice too. And um, I've recently done um, a course on Chinese medicine and the way that it impacts your body, you know, it, it's all integrated. Um, we have circadian rhythms, we have organs that, um, you know, correspond to certain emotions that we have and everything's integrated. So yes, you can detox the parasites. Yes, you can do detox programs. Eventually, if that terrain is not looked after, um, if that terrain is still susceptible to an overgrowth of parasites, then you're going to get it again. So we have to address what went wrong there. Well, and, and I feel that. like, yeah, I feel like our entire society has been hijacked mentally and emotionally. We have, an, especially as Americans, and I would imagine this is everywhere, we, our collective consciousness is one of unworthiness. We, we think we're not good enough. We think that we don't look good enough that we, we don't honor ourselves. Uh, there's been generations of abuse and addiction in most families and lives. And there's so much collectively that we need to heal. And when one of us gets it right and clears all that and says, I am a little magical creation of my creator and and I'm amazing and I'm healed and I'm whole and I'm free when Absolutely. it's it, it 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 helps to heal the collective and Absolutely. it's there's just so much going on I feel a shift happening at least it's happened for for me and and what I'm attracting into my life and the idea that we've got tools like homeopaths and homeopathy and acupuncture and Chinese medicine and herbalism and nutrition. And people are talking about it now. I never heard anybody talking about this stuff when I was a kid. When you oh, were yeah. 
you went to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, just to, just to touch on that a little bit further. Um, so with homeopathy, when we we treat our patients, we see often sometimes um, in patients that require it, we see, you know, actually this is not something that is um, happened in their lifetime. It's something that's been passed down. It's ancestral trauma. And we are able to, with, um, you know, speaking to the patient, as you know, you know, there's a lot of talking and understanding and releasing of emotions with your homeopath while you're in session. Um, so with that, plus with the help of our remedies, we are able to go back um, ancestrally and clear things for people um, through various remedies that we use. Um, you know, we have the thymus gland, we have all sorts of glands in our body that reach back in time. And we're able to clear that slate for people um, and even bring into their conscious, from their subconscious, what could be ailing them. Um, and then what happens is you recalibrate the vital force so that the next generation is now clear of this, you know, with any kind, and that, and that goes for any kind of disease. If you have just a simple asthma and it's been passed down from generation to generation, if I can get hold of one of you, clear that. Your children are less susceptible. Their children will not have it. You know, so you're clearing genes, you're clearing the energy imprints from people's cells. And it just, you know, you're allowing future generations to be born healthy. Okay, question. And I think I know the answer, but I'd love I want to get it from the horse's mouth. This this ancestral type healing, what if I cleared it after I had my kids? Is it genetically already imprinted in them? Or is the fact that because most people aren't going to get healthy by the time they're 25, 30 having kids, they haven't they haven't dug into their pathology and, and what makes them tick. And so I feel like the fact that I've done so much healing work in the last five years totally clears it for my kids, even though they're already born, because they're getting my vibrational imprint now. I'm so present with them. You know, I, I quit alcohol almost five years ago. What a huge gift that is to my children. And, it, but I was nursing them and drinking wine, you know, I mean, so they, got, I don't know. I mean, that's okay. That's okay. You know, that that's nature and nurture. Um, and they equally play a part where I think that, you know, the environment to which we can have a susceptibility to certain things, but how we um, approach things and our mindset and who we are in the present can totally dictate how our body reacts to it and it keeps changing the stronger we get so absolutely you're clearing yourself now that absolutely has an effect on your children going forward because they are then in your vibrational sphere that is healed and they are not being traumatized by your trauma you know and they are able to take that forward with them yeah we we discuss things we don't argue it doesn't happen and they're going to take that forward. This is so awesome. I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited about having you in my life for the rest of my life. When I, Aww. you know, checking in and, and going deeper and finding, you know, we hadn't talked about this ancestral part. I mean, the, the homeopathy keeps just getting more exciting all the time. It, 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 yeah. It just depends on what you want and what you need and how deep you want to go with your practitioner. Um, generally, once we've cleared what our patients want us to clear, um, you know, it's totally directed by them. Um, you know, we're just there to facilitate their healing. They do the work, um, you know, after our initial work's done, they, their body is what heals and they carry that forward. So a lot of my patients, after they are initially cleared of whatever trauma or pathology that they had come to me for, we do maintenance. Um, you know, I see them once or twice a year if they're healthy, which just to maintain certain things. Um, and then more if need be, it just depends. Well, okay. I think that we covered what I wanted to cover and giving everybody a really good overview of what real homeopathy is because we don't know as Americans. So thank you so much. You're for welcome. You know, I think You're welcome. we could demystify this. Is there anything else that we, that you wanted to say? 
Um, no, I just, you know, just just really want people to be able to take their health into their own hands and really be able to make decisions and just trust themselves, trust their bodies. Yes, we need to arm you with the tools. Um, you know, it's not fair that I, I'm not saying don't do this or don't do that. I'm just saying, you know, take a step back. Um, for example, you know, when our children have childhood illnesses, you know, we're so scared. We want to get the medicine, give it to them straight away. But, you know, an illness is a rite of passage most of the time. You know, obviously there are varying degrees, but say, you know, you get chicken pox or the flu, or a, a, a light fever. Don't be too scared because it's a rite of passage. And we see at the end of that illness that our children have actually matured. Their bodies have got stronger and they're better. their body then is better able to cope with the next illness. You know, and it just progresses from there. But if we lather on and suppress every symptom we have, where does our body have the intelligence to grow? So, yeah, as I said earlier, you know, this is a big subject. It's not something that we can discuss in, in an hour. But um, I hope people have had some kind of understanding of what homeopathy can do for them. Um, and going forward, um, I really want to be more of a resource to people. Um, you know, facts, little ideas, tidbits, remedies, first aid, you know, what you should have in your household, 10 top remedies, have this for acid reflux, for allergies, for bites, stings. You know, I'll be going through that on my Instagram page and just giving and just arming people with more information. Okay. Well, um, I, will link, yeah. I will link to all of that in the show notes. So if you guys want to follow her on Instagram or set up an appointment, it'll all be there. And what an amazing, I, I'm Rita, to end on what you just said. I never thought of it that way. I've always let my kids have their fever because I believe in building the body in its natural way. Uh, but I never thought of it as a rite of passage and how, yeah, you, you made it through and now your body has built immunity naturally. Yes. All these things that somehow we got scared of, yeah. you've been, you know, really scared of disease and- when it's a natural part of being a human. So, yeah. well, thank you so much, Amrita, for taking your time this morning and coming on Freedom Junkie Radio. I want to give another shout out real quick to Chris at Chris's Coins. Chris, thank you so much for supporting my work and what I do and putting your, your support where freedom is and where we can talk about whether it's freedom for, for our own health and this, this freedom that you're saying, take your health into your own hands. It's, it's a really ultimate. I mean, what a gift, what a, yeah, yeah. I, it, it's so empowering. You have the power. So if you guys want to support Chris, go down to slaughter lane, Chris's coins, K R I S C O I N S.com. You can find him on slaughter lane in Austin. Be sure and tell him that Betsy from freedom junkie radio sent you go get your Christmas presents there. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Rita again. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Betsy. And we'll it's talk soon. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. have to do an update. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Ciao, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thank you. I live better than a king ever did. I live better than a king.